All right, well, let's actually, I want to play uh, just a couple pieces of sound before we have to let you go. But first, I think this is very, very important. I hear a lot of talk, and again, I, I, I gave a commentary uh, a couple of weeks ago where I contrasted very explicitly Sanders and Warren and why I think Bernie Sanders' overall history of foreign policy and solidarity with uh, countries like Nicaragua in the 1980s and, of course, his anti-Vietnam activism, mm. down to the fact that he is a leader in trying to stop the genocide in Yemen today. Right. That's critical. Uh, is, is profoundly distinct. Has he been wrong on certain votes? Yes. Has he said things on drones that I strongly disagree with? Yes. But I do, and this is where I want to send you know, a, 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 a message. Uh, I would like him to follow Tulsi Gabbard in saying that we need to pardon Edward Snowden and all charges related to Julian Assange uh, and uh, this journalism is a horrifying attack on free press. And I don't care what you think of Julian Assange. Right. You need to focus on what actually is happening. Now, that being said, I hear a lot of talk that, you know, th that Bernie is not the real peace candidate. And I've explained to you a couple of weeks ago that Bernie is the only candidate with anything approximating an anti-imperialist, anti-colonial position, which is genuinely felt, and that he has an understanding of global solidarity, not just isolation. And now in this speech to move on, and uh, Kyle Kalinske clipped this with the excellent title, uh, Bernie swings an ax at the military industrial complex. Mm. He is talking about cutting this whole apparatus which if you don't actually take cuts to it, of you don't course. actually stop these arms manufacturers, Absolutely. you don't actually stop this whole gravy train, which is the reason that we're still in Afghanistan, the yep. reason that, you know, the self-interest of these companies, don't be surprised that the, you know, basic foundational greed that affects national security, quote unquote, just like anything else. This is Bernie Sanders at Move On. You know, there are many enormously important issues including the need for Medicare for all, for giving student debt and making public colleges and universities tuition free, yeah. raising the minimum wage, criminal justice reform, immigration reform, and addressing the global crisis of climate change, yeah. among other issues. But there is one issue out there that does not get the attention that it deserves a very big idea, and that is the need to stop endless wars yep. and to bring, to bring the world together to find diplomatic solutions to international conflict. Today, we are preparing to send soldiers to Afghanistan who were not even born on September 11th, 2001. <laughs> we have spent $5 trillion on the wars that have taken place since, not just in Iraq and Afghanistan, but also in the Saudi-led intervention in Yemen, a horrific war. Yep. And now we have some of the same people that got us into the war in Iraq trying to start a military conflict with Iran. We have got to stop endless wars. We have got to cut military spending. Boom. There it is. There it is. It needs to be cut. Now, recently, recently, I have been attacked because of my opposition to unnecessary wars. I make no apologies as a young man for opposing the war in Vietnam. I make no apologies as a congressman for doing everything that I could to prevent the disastrous war in Iraq. And I am proud right now to have led the effort to get the United States out of an unauthorized, unconstitutional war in Yemen. Right. And let me be absolutely clear, with the Trump administration proposing to send 10,000 troops to confront Iran, I will do everything in my power to stop a war with Iran. It is time to bring our troops home from Afghanistan and Iraq. It is time for Congress to assert its constitutional prerogative and repeal the 2001 
and 2002 authorizations that have been used as a blank check mm. to send U.S. troops into harm's way. But it is not enough to just end military interventions. It is time to end the entire policy of endless wars. Using war and militarism as the first and only foreign policy tool has undermined the United States' moral authority, caused allies to question our ability to lead, drained our treasury, and corroded our own democracy. Of course. When we end endless wars, we can finally begin to ask ourselves, how do we move toward a global community in which people have decent jobs, adequate food, clean water, education, health care, and the housing that they need? Milton. What can I say? I, I bet you uh, he's going to be probably the only candidate that's calling for a cut in the military spending. That I know of. I mean, I've I've heard Tulsi make some signals. I have to say, Mil, uh, you know, Sanders is the only one to vote against all three Trump military budgets, and also he's talking about getting rid of these these authorizations right. for a uh, force in two thousand one and two thousand two. Those are the authorizations by which an entire global war that has hit everywhere from Yemen to Somalia to Pakistan. In addition to all of the places that everybody knows, drones, special forces strikes, all of the civilian casualties that are ongoing, and even the airstrikes in Syria, those two authorizations, they haven't been updated. And, and Libya and now, happened without congressional authorization. And now Iran. Looming, and now is right. Venezuela looming. You know, I mean, he's, uh, he's courageous. And it comes, I think, from being honest and authentic. You know, and I think most politicians are. Politicians, <laughs> right? Uh, you know, how do I get to that coveted office? What do I need to say? So I think all the candidates need to be asked, what is your position on cutting military spending? All of them need to face that question. You know? and, also, and, that, and, that, and that you can't, you know, even if you're pivoting and starting, it goes, if you have good policies domestically. Look, if LBJ wasn't involved in a genocide in Vietnam, he would be a great president. He did great things on health care, on civil rights, on the environment. The trouble is, I don't feel comfortable saying, except for a genocide yeah. in Vietnam. Yeah. It was called uh, butter at home, guns abroad. Right. So you have people now who are getting really woke on Medicare for all and the financial institutions, and that's beautiful. But what he said is absolutely true, too, that you can't. How could you possibly sust durably sustain even enlightened advances that are unbelievably necessary here while we continue to drain and lay waste to the world and you know this is just another example of why it's so important that bernie comes from this socialist tradition because that's why he is able to be so good on the domestic front and on the international front rather than just going by whatever becomes popular at the moment right. i mean it's such an important aspect of bernie's uh, campaign and his his message and you know what he's been doing for the past 30 40 years right. that we cannot overstate enough as we said earlier time and everything else caught up with him yes. he's been consistent yes at one point he was seen as this joke right no somebody who could not be taken seriously he was talking about unrealistic expectations these things can never be attained so it's not part of serious conversation look where we are today <laughs> <laughs> because he was unrealistic, and of course, and of course, that is the thread of whether you're talking about Nkrumah or Sanders yep. or FDR or Sankara. I mean, uh, there's these huge differences. But no, yeah, I, I also love the Castro story, right? That 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 somebody, some foreign journalist, said something like, "You're it's totally unrealistic what you're talking <laughs> about with the Cuban people. You would, what would you do if they if they would if they asked for the moon and Castro said, well, we would need to get them the moon. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah, that's oh, your job. Oh, on Krumah, getting rid of the British empire in Ghana. That wasn't a crazy? realistic <laughs> expectation. That wasn't somebody sitting around, I would yeah. imagine, and saying, hey, you know what we ought to do? Is it just a kind of small, realistic or, thing? Or Mandela. Yeah. We're going to lock you up, and that's the end of it. <laughs> right? Right. <laughs> and they locked him up. He became even much more powerful globally. 
when he was locked up. And I'm, and by the way, incidentally, when we speak about age and Bernie, Nelson Mandela was older than Bernie, very good president. So let's, let's bear and, that in mind as well. And also on Mandela, the Rivonia trial. If you haven't heard that, when he made a statement in his defense, that is on YouTube. If you go to YouTube, The Guardian posted it. So it's on YouTube posted by The Guardian. It's, the sound quality is not that great, but if you listen to it, you would know at that time that this man is going somewhere. The way he broke down the whole narrative, he said, okay, I'm being tried as somebody who is now advocating for armed resistance. And it's true, but it was not by accident or choice. I analyzed all the options, right. and I studied all the great minds in military history, and that's how I came to this conclusion. And I made specific rules that we are not going to hit civilian targets. Only buildings identify with the state. And then why is the other reason that I'm actually pushing in this direction? Because look at the stats. Look at the black schools. Look at the income gap. Look at the healthcare statistics. Like, it's just remarkable. I think he said it and said, you know what? I think he prepared it saying, if I'm executed, at least let me leave this as my final statement. So if you haven't heard it, please go on YouTube and listen to that. Please. You've just watched a Michael Brooks show video, and you can watch all of our full main live shows every Tuesday night at around 7 p.m. Eastern time and subscribe to get all of the clips you want. We're covering the globe. We're focusing on international relations, the intellectual dark web. We're having fun. We're doing deep dives with a lot of amazing guests. Of course, become a patron for the whole thing at patreon.com slash TMBS or subscribe to this YouTube channel and help us keep growing and get that content out there. Subscribe below.